Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, so, uh, so I'm also co-chair co of Infection Control Committee of Aachen University Hospital. So topic of uh, uh, my presentation is infection control in ICU and COVID-19 patient. So I don't have any conflict of interest. Objective of my talks are uh, general measures of infection control in ICU, infection control in COVID-19 ICU unit, role of healthcare professionals in infection control in ICU, and also I will be talking about donning and doffing of staff taking care of COVID-19 patient. So first of all, uh, why we are focusing infection prevention and control in critical care unit. So if we see the literature, uh, to, uh, in, uh, intensive care unit beds are just around 10 to 15% uh, of total hospital beds. But if we see the nosocomial infection rate, it is quite high in intensive care unit. So it accounts for around uh, more than 20% of all nosocomial infections. So it means that uh, intensive care unit patients are five to 10 times more likely to acquire nosocomial infection than other patients. And these patients uh, account for substantial morbidity, mortality, and also expenses. So uh, what are the risks? factors for uh, uh, infection in ICU setting. So some of these factors belong to <clears throat> patient own illness, underlying condition like patients mostly belong to uh, severe, uh, severe sepsis patient, multi-organ failure, polytrauma patient, they have uh, multiple comorbidities, they are, most of them are immunocompromised, they have low GCS, they move less, they are malnourished, they have extreme of ages, and also they are exposed to multiple invasive devices and procedures. For example, when a patient comes in ICU, they mostly they are intubated, they are on ventilator, they, they have central venous uh, catheter placed, they have urinary catheter, they have NG tube, uh, tube placed, they get parenteral nutrition or some IV and parenteral <coughs> drug administration also uh, takes place. Uh, and also they have some uh, post-operative drain in case of sur surgical uh, unit. Uh, and also uh, important factor is that they are, they are exposed to multiple uh, times uh, healthcare workers. So it is uh, one, of, uh, one of the uh, like risk factor for ICU patients there because they are in increased contact with the healthcare workers while they are in the ICU uh, setting. And also they have a long, uh, long length of stay. So uh, different studies have identified different uh, factors uh, related with the administration uh, issues in the ICU setting, and they have identified that uh, those ICUs who have uh, uh, inadequate hand washing facilities, uh, closely placed beds, sharing rooms, those who have lack of isolation facility, understaffing and personal sharing, and no separation of clean and dirty areas, those who are using common sinks uh, for uh, not for uh, just for the hand washing, but also for the drainage of body fluid purpose, washing purpose, uh, preparation of IV units in the uh, IV sets in the units and excessive antibiotic use, inadequate decontamination of items and equipments, and inadequate decontamination contamination environment, those ICU settings are, have got higher rate of ICU acquired infections. So uh, what are the strategies for infection prevention in ICU settings? So like all other areas of the hospital, uh, um, infection control and prevention principle are same for the ICU setting. So uh, always we, uh, we first we talk about standard precaution. And what are standard precautions? Standard precautions are those precautions which are standard for all kinds of patient, like they are to be taken uh, irrespective of the type of the patient and also irrespective of the area of the hospital setting. So uh, what are those precautions? These are hand hygiene, uh, and uh, use of personal protective equipment, uh, and then uh, respiratory hygiene, cough uh, etiquettes, sharp uh, safety, aseptic technique for, for uh, different type of uh, procedure, then implementation of sterilization, disinfection of instrument and devices, and cleaning and disinfection of environmental surfaces in the, in the ICU setting. 
And beside these standard precautions, uh, some additional precautions are also to be taken in the ICU setting, and these are known as transmission-based precautions. Uh, and uh, beside that, uh, additional things are also taken uh, to be taken care in the ICU setting, and those are. Uh, uh, number one, judicious antibiotic use is very important, and also staff education and training, how to uh, handle the patients uh, um, uh, and uh, preventing themselves from acquisition of infection and transmission of infection from one, one patient to another patient, and also surveillance of nosocomial infection. So these are additional things which, uh, which are need to be taken care in ICU, ICU settings. So when we talk about a standard precaution, first, obviously, it is the first and most simple, but most important, I would say, backbone of infection control. That is the uh, that is the hand hygiene. So hands are the most common vehicle of the transmission of organism because uh, from if we see the body parts, the hands are the are the uh, are one of the part of the body which are coming in contact with the surfaces, with the equipment, with the patient, with the uh, with the other things as well. So if we decontaminate our hand uh, judiciously, so they, we we are going to prevent uh, transmission of infection. So when we uh, do the hand hygiene, uh, uh, so we can do the hand washing if there is a facility of hand washing present in the uh, in the unit. And if there is no facility, even we can go for using alcohol and hand rub. And uh, uh, because uh, many of the time studies have shown that the some of the hand uh, areas, they, like interdigital areas of the hand and uh, thumb, they are, these are the areas which can be left while doing the hand hygiene. Therefore, WHO has recommended to perform sequential hand hygiene by using seven steps of, of hand hygiene. And if you will be using that, uh, that step, you won't be missing any of the area. And of course, duration of hand hygiene is again important. That is the alcohol rub takes around 20, at least 20 seconds should be taken by the healthcare worker. And if you are performing hand washing with the help of soap, soap and water, at least more 30 to 40 seconds, at least it should be taken for proper hand washing. Then uh, when to perform hand, hand hygiene. So WHO has recommended that uh, uh, that before uh, before uh, touching the patient and before performing any aseptic procedure, one should do the uh, hand hygiene. And beside that, three three other important uh, scenario in which we need to perform hand hygiene. That is uh, after touching the patient after uh, coming in contact with the body fluid and secretion of the patient and after touching the environment. So uh, there, is also, this, there also comes the role of administration because the administration ko jo hai wo, uh, 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 ye sari jab possible ho sakti hai, jab jo hai ye in cheezon ki facility jo hai wo unit mein ho. Toh, uh, a proper uh, availability of these uh, hand washing sinks and rub, uh, rub uh, they, they should be provided by the administration of the hospital so that uh, healthcare worker can easily go through these hand, hand washing techniques. Then uh, let's come to standard precaution. Standard precautions are, uh, they are basically based on the principle uh, uh, of uh, use of personal protective equipment that uh, we, we, we should assess first the risk of exposure to blood and body fluid. So according to that risk, one should use uh, either the gloves or uh, gloves uh, along with the gown or along with the gloves and gown, mask and um, goggles and other sheets. So all of these personal protective equipment are according to risk assessment by the healthcare professional in the standard precaution that uh, how much I have to go for uh, using these personal protective equipment. So uh, after that, uh, beside that, uh, some other important uh, measures which are need to be taken in ICU settings are transmission-based precautions. Uh, so transmission-based precautions are basically uh, for those organisms which are easy easy to transmit from one patient to another patient, uh, either directly or via a healthcare worker or through the equipment. 
so you must be hearing about multi drug resistant organism uh, uh, in the in most of our icu we are we are we are having lots of um, gram negative multi drug resistant organism like acinetobacter bacteria cepecia klebsiella pseudomonas aeruginosa gram positive may methicillin resistant staph aureus and in addition to some contagious organism patients also get admitted in the icu like uh, mycobacterium tb patients or uh, measles brucella res uh, patients so we need to take some transmission based precautions for these patients and these transmission based precautions are divided into into different category contact uh, isolation droplet isolation or isolation according to need so after that is in most of the icu setting because patients are are on on some kind of invasive devices so they are they also in, implement some kind of uh, prevention bundle like when, uh, prevention of vent associated pneumonia so bundles are basically these are some groups of uh, some precautions which are which are to be taken for any patients who are on ventilatory support similarly to prevent uh, central line uh, related uh, blood stream infections uh, some bundles are uh, are uh, recommended uh, by the uh, infection prevention and control and these bundles are again some uh, checklist and some additional precaution which need to be taken care of while inserting and maintaining the central line catheter in the icu settings so uh, uh, after this i would like to talk about infection prevention in covid-19 critically ill patients so there was a study in uh, china and uh, in that study uh, among 55924 laboratory confirmed cases uh, of china they found that 6.1% cases were identified as critically ill patients so this is not a, a small number this is around 3000 some 400 something in patients uh, this means that th uh, those uh, belong to critically ill criteria and this is another study this was uh, published in jama and uh, th this is again uh, from the china and this shows that among 138 uh, confirmed uh, patients in the one of the healthcare setting they identified that uh, 81 patients were those patients who uh, acquired uh, covid-19 from the community while 17 patients acquired covid-19 from during their hospital stay and uh, not only this 40 of the healthcare workers also acquired uh, infection while they are handling the covid-19 patient so this means that covid-19 is is a contagious uh, organism and we need to take precaution in the in the hospital setting so mode of transmission of covid-19 is basically majority of the time it uh, it uh, transmitted through the droplet route and after that the second important route is the contact route that is a direct and indirect contact of the patient i will uh, talk later about uh, about the airborne transmission of covid-19 which is not a common route in the community but it is of course it is it is it can happen in the uh, healthcare setting so uh, uh, regarding droplet and direct and indirect contact transmission um, uh, uh, like in uh, it is uh, it is also evident from a study in china in which uh, 344 clusters involving 1308 cases they shows that 78 to 85% percent clusters belong to uh, to families so uh, uh, this shows that the contact and uh, droplet transmission is is very very important and uh, survival of this covid-19 according to recent article in the new england journal of medicine it survived uh, for long period on different surfaces including copper cardboard and stainless steel and plastic so so they so they are live virus might be present and if we are touching the surfaces so we can acquire this uh, these uh, infection this infection indirectly by touching these uh, surfaces so airborne spread is important from the uh, from the hospital setting point of view and especially in the icu setting because uh, in the icu setting many aerosol generating procedures are taking place so what are the aerosol generating procedure these are uh, tra tracheal intubation bronchial suctioning bronchoscopy sputum induction by using saline and nasopharyngeal swab these are labeled as uh, aerosol generating procedure so what are aerosol these are less than 5 micron diameter of of uh, uh, particles which remain suspended in the 
air for long period of time and they also travel longer distance and they can transmit to anyone who, who is far beyond the patient so uh, so uh, this uh, these are important to uh, to note that some uh, special precaution to be needed while doing this aerosol generating procedure fecal shedding is not a, appear to be a significant driver of covid-19 transmission so objective of covid-19 uh, patient uh, management in icu setting is to prevent transmission of hospital acquired infection in the covid-19 patient and not only that but also prevent transmission of covid-19 to non covid-19 patient uh, healthcare workers as well as to the visitors so uh, first of all patient placement in the icu is very important ideally speaking uh, uh, that patient uh, who is on ventilator who is on, undergoing aerosol generating procedure should be placed in airborne isolation room that room is is a, is a room which has got negative pressure in relation to surroundings it ha it has to be 6 to 12 air changes per hour it should be uh, and the air uh, um, exhaust should be appropriately discharged uh, to outdoors or or monitor high efficiency filtration of room air before air is circulated to the other areas in the hospital and a room door should be kept closed throughout unless uh, um, it, it is uh, needed to be entered into the room healthcare worker who are entering into the room should be using special n95 respirator or equivalent respirator and uh, there should be a sink inside or the alcohol gel dispenser within the room there should be dedicated medical equipment present in the uh, within the uh, room so that Uh, so uh, so that uh, there is no need of of sharing of uh, instrument between the patients uh, so if uh, disposable med medical equipments are uh, are uh, available uh, you we should go for disposable one preferably Uh, but uh, in the in a survey uh, across the asian countries it shows that among 335 icu uh, uh, among 20 asian countries it showed that 37% of the icu had no uh, airborne isolation room so what should be done in that scenario in a recent article in lancet they have uh, uh, discussed that and they are they are saying that if negative pressure rooms are unavailable uh, you should admit patient to a normal pressure adequately ventilated single room uh, uh, room and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the door must remain closed except when entering or leaving and uh, we, sh we should go for closed ventilator circuit Uh, usage and uh, closed suctioning system should be used in that uh, scenario and uh, positive and confirmed cases uh, can be cohorted because a number of time it happens that uh, we have number of, uh, increased number of patients so these uh, positive and confirmed cases can be cohorted if needed with the dedicated staff with the bed spaced uh, apart and uh, oxygen mask with hepa filter but uh, it is recommended that the covid-19 suspected patient should not be cohorted why because they are not confirmed they might be negative in the future so these should uh, Uh, these patient should be kept in uh, uh, separate uh, room so uh, uh, regarding uh, ppe recommendation for the staff because uh, the, uh, these patients are most of the time they are undergoing aerosol generating procedure so healthcare staff should be wearing uh, eye protection that is the gloves of face shield they should be wearing long sleeve water resistant gowns they should be wearing gloves and of course uh, a special type of respirator that is the n95 respirator or equivalent respirator uh, should be used and uh, uh, because uh, n95 uh, respirator uh, they they need uh, fit testing and uh, so those persons who have facial hair there is a problem with the fit testing of the n95 mask so in that case there are other options available uh, um, uh, you might get these uh, type of respirator from the market these are either half piece respirator or the full piece respirator they are um, they are a reusable one and they can easily easily be decontaminate and then the paper are the uh, another option and uh, paper is the one which doesn't require any fit testing and one can use uh, loose paper uh, uh, with the facial hair easily 
so while intubation what what are the uh, important consideration to be taken most skilled operator should be performing the task with the full ppe and there should be limit of the number of assistant in the room bag masking ventilation should be minimized by prolonged pre oxygenation a viral filter can be placed between the exhalation valve and the mask and this this would prevent the re release of covid-19 aerosol from the from the mask so these are the recommendation this is the picture i have taken from the net and many of the uh, uh, of the western countries i see they are using this uh, uh, transparent box sort of uh, uh, box for uh, intubation purpose uh, so so prevent the exposure of healthcare but workers uh, aerosol during the intubation process ventilator management always uh, use dedicated disposable uh, breathing circuit on in, in, an individual patient use a closed breathing cir uh, circuit and it, that should not be broken unless absolutely necessary uh, avoid to use uh, uh, the other type of uh, filter that are reused uh, try to use hb filter and uh, water humidification should be avoided and uh, a breathing circuit uh, uh, tubing con uh, condensate if it is accumulate in uh, periodically it can be drained uh, very uh, in a safe behavior and discard uh, any condensate if it is accumulated inside the tubing and uh, try to use inline uh, suction catheter that is a closed uh, uh, suction system and uh, sterile water is preferred for rinsing of these catheter if these catheter uh, catheters are uh, not uh, single use one and uh, also try to use uh, disposable suction bottles all respiratory equipment must be protected by a filter with high efficiency filter and uh, these filter uh, can be undergo decontamination based on manufacturer uh, recommendation and uh, reusable ventilator uh, ventilator tubing must uh, not be used ideally but if uh, you uh, you don't have any choice and you have to reuse ventilator tubing that should be decontaminated in accordance with the manufacturer recommendations so then there are some sops for for suctioning process i'm not going into detail of these process one should follow all these uh, uh, these procedure sop should be made for different suctioning procedure how to clean them how to keep them how to reuse them and similarly sops for equipment use and disinfection like humidifier you are using reusing humidifier how to clean it and keep it uh, safely and how uh, how to uh, go for oxygen mask ideally dedicated oxygen mask should be used for uh, for every patient regarding environmental decontamination uh, sars cov uh, as it can contaminate different uh, patient care areas including furniture door knobs guard rails uh, equipment toilets so uh, it should be routinely clean with the with a uh, neutral detergent and after that uh, 0.1% hypochlorite should be used for decontamination of the environment and uh, this is the table which which is uh, showing that uh, how how could you uh, make Uh, different 0.1% uh, concentration of hypochlorite from different uh, concentration of hypochlorite strength available in the market so by diluting with the appropriate amount of water you can make that dilution and uh, you can utilize that in your setting iske ilawa jo hai wo if uh, uh, um, um, instrument you, you can't clean with the hypochlorite you can uh, use 70% uh, alcohol uh, for uh, those surfaces that can that can uh, become damage by using sodium hypochlorite so alcohol wipes are available in the market you can utilize those uh, large wipes what is the role of healthcare professional in infection control in icu so uh, as a healthcare professional this is our duty ke hum jo hai wo uh, appropriate jo hai wo um, infection control practices ko follow kare and we should strictly follow hand hygiene practices and personal protective equipment religiously hame is par jo hai wo amal karna chahiye and during the during the Uh, working uh, hours we should not we should try to uh, avoid uh, touching our eyes mouth nose with the with the hands kyunki agar hum ye karenge to we we can easily transmit infection uh, to uh, to ourselves 
so uh, donning and doffing is again very important and it should be done in a proper uh, pro proper way i am going to tell you how it, it should be performed and it fe if feasible after the duty shower should be taken before leaving the hospital and during the uh, break uh, physical distancing should be maintained by the staff kyunki hum ye humne aksar ye hamari personal hamari experience hai ke during duties to hum isko uh, properly follow karte hain but uh, after duties we forget and if physical distancing ko phir log jo hai itna seriously nahi lete hain so it should be during break during taking meal during tea breaks one should maintain the distance and mobile phone ka use bhi jo hai it is very important try to avoid mobile phone agar aap use kar rahe hain to it should be cleaned regularly or you can wrap it with the with the specimen bag that will be discarded daily then self screening daily self screening for covid 19 symptom this is also one of the very important role of healthcare professional to do the self screen if we understand that there are any symptoms produced or not then we should report immediately to our to our supervisor and uh, testing should be done obviously quarantine jab tak jab tak karna padega jab tak results na aaye okay so uh, briefly i will be telling about the sequence of donning and doffing kyunki aap log iske baad ek movie dekhenge jisme proper jo hai wo aapko bataya jayega to uh, how to do the donning or, or the wearing of personal protective equipment kya sequence hona chahiye gown should be uh, should be uh, first wear uh, the gown and then mask or respirator and then goggles or face shield and followed by gloves okay and uh, before uh, doing the donning one should do the hand hygiene so uh, when we are wear, uh, we are going to wear a, a type of particular uh, particulate respirator like n95 mask so is ko bhi proper ek technique hoti hai aapne fit tested uh, respirator ko utilize karna hai this is very important and aapko mask ko hand hygiene karke mask ko bahar ke area se aapne usko pakad kar usko apne nose par aur face par achhi tarah se adjust karke then try to uh, fix the nose uh, pin and then uh, elastic ko piche se secure कर ले ठीक है उसके बाद यू नीड टू परफॉर्म सेल्फ फिट फिट टेस्टिंग और लीक टेस्टिंग एंड हाउ इट इज इट इज नीड टू बी परफॉर्म आपने पहले इनहेलेशन करनी है व्हाट यू विल बी एक्सपेक्टिंग इनहेलेशन के दौरान जो है वो रिस्पिरेटर जो है वो अंदर की तरफ क्लैप्स होगा एंड देन व्हेन यू विल बी डूइंग एक्सलेशन आपका देयर वुड बी एंड यू विल बी फीलिंग विद योर हैंड यू वोंट बी फीलिंग एनी लीकेज ऑफ ऑफ एयर अराउंड योर फेस so this means that your uh, respirator is is totally uh, fit and uh, now you are uh, totally fit for uh, taking care of patient uh, during during uh, removal of the ppe what should be the sequence gloves should be removed first why because gloves are the most contaminated so so aapko bahut hi ehtiyat se jo hai wo gloves ko aapko pehle remove karna hai ek pehle hath ka gloves remove kiya aapne and then second gloves and perform hand hygiene before removing other पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट उसके बाद सीक्वेंस क्या होगा कि फेस शील्ड और गॉगल्स को रिमूव किया गाउन को आपने रिमूव किया और गाउन को भी इस तरह से रिमूव करना है यू कैन सी इन द पिक्चर के आपके इन साइड आपको रोल करना है ताकि कंटेमिनेटेड गाउन का एरिया जो है वो आपका जो है वो अंदर रोल रोल हो जाए रोल इन हो जाए और देन यू यू डिस्कार्ड और यू वॉन्ट टू कीप इन एम्पर बैग फॉर इन केस ऑफ रीयूजल गाउन फॉर लॉन्ड्रिंग पर्पज आप वॉट एवर अकॉर्डिंगली आप उसको करें और आपने इसको कर, उतारना कहाँ पर है तो so, ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट जो है वो आपको जस्ट बिफोर द लीविंग द रूम पेशेंट रूम अगर आ, आपको इन सब चीज़ों को उतारना है और एक्सेप्ट आपका रिस्परेटर और आपको जो है वो उसके बाद जो है वो अगर एंटी रूम है तो यू कैन इजीली रिमूव इन द एंटी रूम और आपको रिस्परेटर को रूम के बाहर आने के बाद आपको उतारना है ओके सो दिस दिस इज द एंड and um, thank you so much for uh, listening uh, thank you dr seema actually aapki presentation ke sath sath na bahut sare questions aa gaye jo logon ne puche so i will try to uh, catch the important one taki hum uh, usi pe jo presentation pe focus rahe ji ji uh, ek question aaya ki uh, kindly clarify the duration of hand hygiene everybody so far including who experts have told of 20 seconds while you have mentioned 42 to 60 seconds in your presentation so can clear ek hum baat karte hain hand washing ki aur ek hum baat karte hain hand hygiene ki theek hai hand hygiene 
जो हम अल्कोहल रब से करते हैं वो तो उसकी ड्यूरेशन जो है वो डब्ल्यू एच ओ की वेबसाइट पर जो है वो ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी सेकेंड जो है उसकी दी हुई है ठीक है लेकिन जब हम इसलिए अगर यूजअली लोग मिनिमम को ही करते हैं क्योंकि इतना टाइम लोगों के पास नहीं होता है तो एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी सेकेंड शुड बी शुड बी गिवन टू द हैंड हाइजीन सेकेंडली जो है वो हैंड वॉशिंग हैंड वॉशिंग आपको पता है थोड़ा सा स्लो प्रोसेस है तो इसके लिए जो है वो अराउंड फोर्टी टू सिक्सटी सेकेंड्स आर नीडेड the one of the other question which is an interesting one from someone working in shifa international islam hospital islamabad uh, healthcare workers who are attending the corona patients on daily basis for how long one person could attend corona positive patient and what is the protocol of for their own health safety are they need to isolate them on the daily basis after attending the corona patient dekhiye if you are using personal protective equipment appropriately so there is no problem with that देखिए अगर आपने जो है वो अपने आप को जो है वो एन नाइन्टी फाइव रिस्परेटर लगाया हुआ है आपने आपने गॉगल्स एंड फेस शील्ड आपने पहनी हुई है आपने जो है वो फ्लूड रेपलेंट या फ्लूड रेजिस्टेंट आपने गाउन पहना हुआ है ग्लव्स पहना हुआ है रिलीजियसली जो है वो आप सारी जो है वो हैंड हाइजीन प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं तो कोविड पॉजिटिव पेशेंट्स को डील करने में कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है देखिए सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ये है कि कि आपने जो है वो किस तरह से अपने आप को और दूसरे पेशेंट्स और दूसरे हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स को प्रोटेक्ट करना है अदरवाइज ये कोई इसकी कोई रिस्ट्रिक्शन नहीं है कि आप कोविड 19 पेशेंट्स को आप जो है वो उसको डील ना करें या कितने ड्यूरेशन तक डील डील करें ठीक है तो इसमें कोई इसमें कबाहत नहीं है वन क्वेश्चन इज इज एन नाइन्टी फाइव मास्क डिस्पोजेबल और is there is a possibility we can decontaminate them with some material bilkul uh, dekhiye pehle jo cdc ki recommendations thi unhone usko jo kaha tha ke n95 mask jo uh, uh, 3m ka ya dusri uh, equivalent companies ke jo mask hain वो जो है वो डिस्पोजेबल है और वो उसको सिंगल यूज के लिए उन्होंने कहा था रिकमेंड किया था बिफोर कोविड पैंडेमिक लेकिन बिकॉज ऑफ द शॉर्टेज बिकॉज ऑफ द नॉन अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ दीज मास्क अब नाउ सी डी सी गाइडलाइन इज चेंज एंड नाउ दे आर रिकमेंडिंग फॉर फॉर री यूजिंग ऑफ दीज मास्क एक मास्क आप अगर आपने सेफली उसको सिक्योर करके आप उसको किसी पेपर बैग में दैट इज द ब्रीदेबल बैग होना चाहिए क्योंकि कुछ सिक्रीशन होती हैं अगर आप ह्यूमिडिटी प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो वो ऑर्गेनिज्म मल्टीप्लाई होगा तो आपने किसी ऐसे पेपर बैग में उसको उतारने के बाद उसको सिक्योर करके रखना है कि उसकी डिसफिगरमेंट ना हो उसकी शेप में तो आप उसको सिक्योरली जो है वो मल्टीपल टाइम्स आप उसको प्रॉपर तरीके से री कर सकते हैं डिकंटेमिनेशन यस इफ इट इज अवेलेबल इन योर सेटिंग यू कैन गो फॉर डिकंटेमिनेशन दे आर डिफरेंट मेथड्स व्हिच आर अवेलेबल नाउ डेज एंड रिकमेंडेड बाय इवन बाय द सीडीसी एंड डब्ल्यू एच ओ फॉर डिकंटेमिनेशन ऑफ दीज डिस्पोजेबल एंड नाइन्टी फाइव रिस्परेटर और इसमें सबसे ज्यादा जो कॉमनली जो यूटिलाइज हो रहे हैं उसमें आइदर दे आर यूजिंग वेपरस हाइड्रोजन पर और यू वी दे ये दो मैथडोलॉजीज जो है वो डिकंटेमिनेशन के लिए यूज हो रही है लेकिन वॉट एवर मैथड यू आर यूजिंग मेक अ फुल प्रोटोकॉल प्रोसेस फॉर डिकंटेमिनेशन रिसीविंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ये सारी चीज़ों को आपने पूरा इसको जो है वो उसका एक मेनटेन करना पड़ेगा हॉस्पिटल में ताकि वो सेफली जो है वो डिकंटेमिनेट होकर यूजर्स के पास जो है वो एन नाइन्टी फाइव मास्क पहुँच सके इसके अलावा मैंने अभी आप लोगों को कुछ पिक्चर्स दिखाई कि री यूजबल रिस्परेटर्स आर ऑल्सो अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट ये जो होते हैं ये रबर के हाफ फेस शील्ड या फुल फेस शील्ड रिस्परेटर हैं इनकी भी फिट टेस्टिंग की नीड तो है लेकिन ये रीयूजेबल है लाइक like, अगर एक पेशेंट ने पर्सन ने यूज किया है इसको आप अल्कोहल और जो भी मेथड मेथड इसमें मैन्युफैक्चरर की रिकमेंडेशन है उसके आप उसको डिकंटेमिनेट उसको कर देते हैं तो दूसरा पर्सन उसको आराम से यूज कर सकता है तो अदर ऑप्शंस आर आल्सो अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट वन मोर क्वेश्चन इज दैट एवरी टाइम आफ्टर डॉफिंग डू डॉक्टर्स नीड न्यू पीपी फॉर नेक्स्ट टाइम इट डिपेंड्स क्या आपके आपके हॉस्पिटल की क्या पॉलिसी है देखें आप जो है वो फ्लूड रेपलेंट गाउन जो है वो आप आप रीयूजेबल गाउन भी यूज कर सकते हैं इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन कि आपका मटेरियल गाउन का कौन सा है अगर आपका मटेरियल रीयूजेबल गाउन का है तो यू कैन गो यू कैन सेंड दैट गाउन फॉर एवरी यूज फॉर फॉर लॉन्ड्रिंग और जब लॉन्ड्रिंग होकर आ जाए तो आप जो है वो दोबारा से उसको यूज कर सकते हैं ठीक है लेकिन उसी गाउन को विदाउट लॉन्ड्रिंग आप अवॉइड करें उसको 
कोई यूज ना करें ठीक है क्योंकि वो कंटेमिनेट हुआ हुआ है और जब अगर आपने उसको विदाउट उसको प्रॉपर लॉन्ड्रिंग या नया अपने गाउन नहीं पहना है तो आप अपने आप को भी कंटेमिनेट कर सकते हैं सिमिलरली अगर आप जो है वो गॉगल्स को भी अच्छी तरह से डिकंटेमिनेट करके और फेस शील्ड को डिकंटेमिनेट करके री किया जा सकता है हमने मास्क की ऑलरेडी हमने बात कर दी लेकिन ऑफकोर्स ग्लव्स जो हैं वो ऑलवेज डिस्पोजेबल ग्लव्स यूज होंगे अगर जो है वो आप उसको जो है वो अच्छी तरह से अल्कोहल वाइफ से डिस करें और उसको जो है वो प्रॉपरली जो है उसको ड्राई एरिया पे सिक्योर करें तो आप उसको रीयूज बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं अब वन क्वेश्चन जो बार बार किसी ने पूछा दिस इज द लास्ट वन क्योंकि हमारे पास टाइम अप शॉर्ट है व्हाट इज वायरल फिल्टर इज इट द सेम एज एचएमई फिल्टर वी यूज फॉर बैक्टीरियल इंफेक्शन प्रोटेक्शन देखिए एचएमई फिल्टर जो है वो इट्स नॉट अ वायरल फिल्टर एट ऑल एचएमई इज हीट मॉइस्चर एक्सचेंज फिल्टर ठीक है तो जब मैं मैं नेट पे गई तो मैंने एचएमई फिल्टर की वो देखी तो मेन पर्पस उसका यही है कि वो जो है डिस्पोजेबल फिल्टर होता है और ह्यूमिडिफिकेशन और उसके लिए यूज होता है उसमें आपको कोई वाटर इंस्टॉलेशन वगैरह की नीड नहीं होती है ठीक है लेकिन there are some uh, hme filters which are also having viral filter in addition to hme property jisko hme f filter kehte hain to hme f filter agar use hai to wo dono purpose serve karega yani humidification wala purpose bhi moist exchange ka purpose bhi serve kar raha hai aur bacteria and viral filtration ka bhi kar raha hai lekin sirf hme filter jo hai wo sirf apna initial परपज जो है वो सर्व करेगा तो अगर आपका आपका ऑब्जेक्टिव ये है कि दोनों ड्यूल उसके हो तो आपको एच एन ई एफ सेलेक्ट करना होगा ठीक थैंक यू डॉक्टर सीमा थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर टॉक